The emperor penguin is technically a bird, although one that makes his home in the sea. So if you're wondering what he's doing up here on the ice, well, that's part of our story. <laughs> that's a clip from the Oscar-winning 2005 documentary, March of the Penguins. The film brought worldwide attention to the extraordinary migration these unique birds make across Antarctica each year, showcasing the vastness of the bird species. Exactly 100 years ago, the U.S. government passed a groundbreaking law to protect migratory birds that fly across the Atlantic. To mark that anniversary, National Geographic magazine helped to declare 2018 the year of the bird. And it kicked off the observance with an essay from acclaimed author Jonathan Franzen, who is also a bird lover and a conservationist. In the middle of the country's biggest metropolis is an urban oasis for bird lovers, even on a chilly late winter morning. Some visiting relatives came with binoculars. We went out into the park. It was a similar experience 18 years ago that changed author Jonathan Franzen's life forever. They're peering into this tree and there's this incredible brightly colored little warbler sitting in this tree that I'd passed literally 500 times and the scales had fallen from my eyes. There was this other world. It was like being introduced to sex. In the two decades since, Franzen has traveled to see as many of the world's nearly 10,000 bird species as possible. I've actually birded on all seven continents. Um, have Which seen, has been the best. There's a bad kind of birder who only cares about increasing the length of his or her list of birds seen. Um, You're that kind of birder, aren't I you? I have a little bit of that. <laughs> but there's another part of me that I think is a good birder, which is this, is this is a way to have an experience. Do you need vast amounts of patience? We met up with Franzen at his home in Santa Cruz, California. It wasn't long before Franzen found a songbird. That is a chestnut-backed chickadee there, related to the black-capped you have in New York, but with that beautiful chestnut back. It's not as easy as it looks. It's tricky. Again, look at the bird, bring the binoculars up, try to get a little landmark, and you have to sort of lead them a little bit. But it's worth the wait. Uh, yes, that is the Townsend's Warbler. Uh, oh, now, right out in the open, okay. right there, right there. Oh, you ought to be able to see that, Alex. There, I, there we go, there we go. <gasps> oh, look! Isn't that a spectacular bird? Oh, so spectacular. Oh, look at the colors. Yeah, that's a bright male Townsend's Warbler. Oh, that's a good one. In his January essay, Why Birds Matter and Are Worth Protecting, Franzen compares birds to humans, writing, they build intricate homes and raise families in them. They take long winter vacations in warm places. Cockatoos are shrewd thinkers, solving puzzles that would challenge a chimpanzee, and crows like to play. We live on an extraordinarily weird and wonderful planet. Yes, yes. Birds uh, show us how weird the planet is in a lot of ways, too. Um, to the extent that there is still a natural world, the birds are the best ambassadors for it because you can't go anywhere on this planet without running into birds. You can be 90 miles inland in Antarctica, and there are the emperor penguins. You can be in the most bleak South Pacific Ocean, and there are the albatrosses. There are seagulls nesting in the desert. I've seen great birds outside my window on the Upper East Side in Manhattan. They're everywhere and always not really caring very much about us. They're just being themselves. But that doesn't mean that humans aren't affected by birds. Franzen remembers one experience in East India when he was approached by two great hornbills. They flew in. And it sounded like some meteorological event. Their, their, their wings are so huge, it's this woof, woof, woof as they come in. And as I watched them climb around in this tree, they were eating fruit. And I became aware that somebody was shouting. And I realized I'm shouting. That is spontaneous joy <laughs> that I am emitting. The joy uh, is contagious, so. as when we came upon a pair of owls. The owl is sleeping, as far as I God, can tell. This is so Oh my God, this is so awesome. This is the best Valentine's Day ever. Did everyone hear that? Alex just said best Valentine's Day ever. I mean, what's better than seeing two owls in a tree? There are some birds that are just, everybody wants to see them, but they really certainly don't disappoint, do they? 
Um, okay, they're going to be there for a while, so I want you to look at the okay. red-shouldered hawk with the, that beautiful red chest and the white stripes in the tail. Are you on it? Look at the thing and then bring the binoculars up. Yep, I see that. It's so great being able to really see them. Oh, I saw the stripes. That was amazing. Yeah, and they also have beautiful black and white patterns on the wow. back and wings. It's moments like this that made Jonathan Franzen fall in love with birds. And because I'd fallen in love with them, I wanted to help them. Birds may have the gift of flight, yet Franzen points out they are unable to master their own environments. Humans are responsible for the climate changing too quickly for birds to adapt. And Franzen wonders if birds are valued enough for us to make the effort to protect them. Part of my mission has become to try to remind people that there are other things to think about if you care about nature than just climate change. Climate change often feels abstract. Exactly. It feels like something that will eventually possibly happen. And it sounds like your interest in, in birds and conservationism has to do with the here and now. That's exactly right. This month, National Geographic is highlighting how birds are able to migrate thousands of miles every year and how a changing landscape is making it harder for them. The contrast that is interesting to me is between a kind of fire and brimstone Christianity. You are damned unless you change your ways, which is kind of the climate conversation. And then on the other hand, you have this older Catholic, particularly Franciscan from St. Francis, who was all about, hey, birds, I love the birds. I'm gonna write to the emperor and ask him to put grain out in the fields on Christmas Day to feed my friends the larks. Mm -hmm. His approach to the world was love, 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 love. And I think for meaningful action of any kind, love is a much better motivator than fear of damnation.